to call this go to the open space. Well, you're going to have the backcourt working together in this one, and two Holloway is going to be running the break as you watch. He's going to be the ball right here. Mark Lyons is right here. He's going to follow the play and run to the three-point line. You'll see all the white jerseys go back into the paint, and Lyons is going to have a wide-open look. I mean, this is just uh, two guys who play very well together running the open space. Yeah. There isn't a white jersey around him, and that's as good a look as you're going to get on the break. And that's our Lexus playbook for this afternoon is right now Xavier three players in double figures led by Desmond Wells with 16 Lions with 14 Kenny freeze has 10. I think what's also impressive Xavier looking at the stats right now. They've got 16 assists on their 23 baskets very unselfish basketball team uh, uh, and that's and that's Holloway scoring right now at nine points under his average. I got a feeling he's going to get a little closer to that as this game unfolds. But it's been other people who have stepped up for uh, the Musketeers. Xavier goes out of the zone, which has been so successful for him for a lot of today's game. 18 to shoot. Barton. Will Barton still on the bench. And we've got a whistle, and that's going to be on Lions, I believe. That'll be number four on Lions, and we still have a lot of time left in this game. And Memphis will be in the bonus. Here's a look at Will Barton still on the bench. And Redford comes in, Lions will go out. So you exchange one sharpshooter for another. Here's a look at Joe Jackson, a sophomore from right here in Memphis. 85% for the line. Such a talent-rich area yeah. that Josh Pastner doesn't even have to get on a plane to you know, recruit. If he just gets the best players out of Memphis, he's going to be just fine. He's got eight Memphis natives on this team right now, and Jackson makes good on both. The lead down to eight. Plenty of time left. You like the pressure, Jeep? Well, it just, you know, it disrupts you a little bit. It takes some time off the clock, gets you a little bit out of your rhythm. They're having a little bit more of a problem. Just beat the 10-second yeah. count there. And uh, you don't want your power forward being the guy who can handle it and bring it over. And he almost went over the timeline, didn't move back again. He was close to that happening. And now they look up, and they've got 12 to shoot it. So that's, this is what the press does. All of a sudden, the clock's on your back. Breeze looks to set the pick. Jackson can't slip it. Now he does. Holloway with three. Long three-pointer. Rebound last touch by Xavier. It'll be Memphis basketball, so it worked that time. Yeah, and I say they, 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 they clearly weren't able to get into anything at all, and you have to rely on Holloway. Rather than letting him get to the rim, they forced him into a long three. So that was, that was a good defensive sequence for Memphis. Once again, Memphis had to tighten up their defense. Xavier in the second half shooting nearly 56% on the season Memphis only allows 38% Jackson sees a little split in the defense can't take advantage freeze with a rebound the second double double of the year quickly Wells loses the handle gets it back it's a calming force when the ball's in Holloway's hand. He'll split the double. Wells loves to go baseline. Count it! And one. You know, some guys who are athletic are a little wild and can be out of control and are susceptible to the charge, but he really plays within himself. Takes what's there. Watch the pull up right here. He could go all the way, but uh, that was a terrific offensive move. Wow. This kid's going to be a star. He is definitely going to be that. 18 points on eight of nine shooting, three for three from the line. Now give him 19 points, four rebounds, four assists. That's a complete game for what the coaches call the hardest worker on the team. By the way, Will Barton is back in the lineup for Memphis. Witherspoon for three, and he buries his second one of the afternoon. And they, and they got the switch that time, and normally that's not a bad thing, but because of his size that he's able to rise up. And they're going to call a foul on Witherspoon. Wow. 
You see this in the little screen roll action right here. You get the switch, and he's able to step back. And I think that, uh, you know, right there, that if you're, uh, if you're Holloway, you have to get up into him and make him drive. Right. That's where you have the advantage. You can see Memphis already in the bonus. Xavier not quite there yet. Closing in on five minutes to play in the ball game. Xavier took the lead in the first half and they have not relinquished it. And that's going to be a foul. And that'll be on Will Barton. That's five team fouls right now on Memphis. Dips inside, they were looking for him ahead to Jackson, tips it to himself, out to the hole, and he misses the slam, but we've got a foul. Saw that play last night in a Miami Heat game where Wade tipped it to himself. Well, and it started with Barton on the, on the steal from behind, almost an errant pass. Maybe uh, Jackson trying to do a little bit too much here. Just kind of go in and make the layup. I think he didn't know if he felt like he had an yeah. open path to the basket. And he'll go back to the free throw line. And Jackson, perfect four of four from the strike. He's got six points and eight assists today. You know, we first saw Joe Jackson at the Tennessee game as Chris Mack trying to get his team to tighten up the D. But Jackson was the difference in that game back on January the 4th. Defensively, he was outstanding. Memphis a plus five now at the free throw line, so advantage there. And this pressure has gotten Xavier out of sync a little bit offensively, and Chris Mack wants a timeout. And he calls it right it's after the, 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 the timeout was first. called yeah. first before the foul. Yeah, good call right there. Good job by the officials. Here's the pressure again by Memphis. And this is more all-out pressure. It had been token up to this point, but now they're committed to running and jumping and getting the ball out of their hands. And again, I, this is my pet peeve in college basketball about uh, getting a new fresh 10 seconds to get it over half court instead of the five with the shot clock right now. Well, the man that's been the hot hand, though, for Chris Mack and company has been Desmond Wells, just a freshman. Preseason, all 10, all rookie team. Good head above his shoulders. They like this guy. Nice mid-range game, can finish at the rim. Very solid going all the way. And the thing you like about it, he is a low-volume shooter right now. Right. 19 points on only nine attempts. He has great tenacity and enthusiasm. And once again, he's just a freshman. As you can see, more than doubling his average today. 5.24 to play. The lead can cut to six. Xavier has led by as many as 10 in this ball game. The biggest lead Memphis had was by two, and that was early on in this contest. I agree with you on the second 10. I agree 100%. You get penalized. Just, right? it pay, yeah, penalizes the defense. I, I just I don't, I don't agree with it. Holloway being guarded by Jackson, and Jackson reaches in, and that must have been a fingernail. Oh, he got him on the arm. And a fresh 35 on the shot clock. See them really pushing down on that sideline screen roll. Freeze in the lane. Walker loses the handle, but then he draws the whistle. You know, that, that works, but if, if, I'm, if I'm Memphis, I like that fact that you're making somebody other than Holloway make decisions. That right. time, Freeze was able to get the pass in. He's been really jamming him on the sideline. That was a tough pass to connect, but uh, Walker has really played well in the second half. And I like the way they closed in on Walker. Tomorrow, don't miss an explosive day of women's college basketball. First, UTEP looks to take down the Lady Owls of Rice. Then the women's square off as Missouri battles it out with number 25, Texas Tech. The day in for the Pac-12 showdown. Washington faces Brianna Gilbreth. 
in the USC Trojans, a full day of college basketball tomorrow, 12 Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Ron, the one problem with Walker and Freeze, they're both liabilities at the free throw line. Or Freeze at 47%, Walker at 54. So end game, you're going to take a foul. And Memphis will call a timeout, so they'll have it out the far or the near side. Well, you know, at the beginning of the game, we talked about the importance of this game. Chris Mack says he likes playing a non-conference game this time in February. He's won the last four. But here's why it's important right at that RPI mark. Yeah, and uh, 47. Now, the, I think the Tigers, those numbers are in a better situation with the higher RPI, with the 25 RPI and their, and their strength of schedule at eight. So maybe a little bit more important for Xavier to come out of this with a win. Well, Memphis upcoming schedule, if, if you just take the wins and losses versus their next five CUSA opponents, eight and 20 coming into this week. And here are the next three. Two out of the next three are on the road at East Carolina at Tulane. But Josh Pastor telling me yesterday that he is concerned about all those, especially UAB, because they're such a well-coached basketball team. Well, let's look at the corner is not an easy place to take the ball out of bounds. And they get it in. Shot clock at 20, 440 to play in the ballgame. Witherspoon on the drive. They're going to count it, and it'll be a foul. He has given this team a huge lift off the bench. A couple of threes and a strong drive there, a three-point play before fashion way going left, and uh, Freeze just not getting there in time to take the, he was outside of the block charge line, but just never really got squared up and committed to take the foul. Well, they had high hopes for Wesley Witherspoon, the senior out of Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, it was first game of the year, 22 points yeah. against Belmont, so there's <laughs> there's room for optimism there. And he had 12 then versus Marshall, which is first double figure game since then. And he's got the free throw to go down. So with his third in the ball game, he goes back to double figures with 11. And the lead gets cut to four. Holloway breaks the pressure and then it will set things up. Well, that was a nice release of pressure. The freeze coming up to give him an outlet and then. Uh, Working easily that time. Holloway breaking down the deep. Holloway over Black. No, Black battles and gets the rebound. Jackson running the show for the point. Will Barton, 10 to shoot. Looking for Black on the inside. Shot clock at five. Got to do something with it. Wide open, Antonio Barton, no. Offensive rebound, that's going to be a foul called on Witherspoon. Great job getting the offensive rebound, but he lowered the shoulder. 3.37 to play. Xavier still leading by four. Well, here's our auto stop game summary for this afternoon. And you can see the field goal percentage in the second half. Xavier now down to 52%, but that's giving them the big lead. Uh, you, you touched on it, too. The number you like, 17 assists on 24 made field goals. So, uh, you know, a lot of that has been Holloway. Two Holloway in, in a hostile environment, seven assists, only one turnover. Debbie Antonelli, how is Josh Pastner in the uh, Memphis huddle? Very animated and speaking to Coach or to G-Man's point about fouling Freeze or Walker when they catch the ball on the block. He wants them to hack them so that they have to go to the free throw line because they're poor free throw shooters. Offensively, he wants them to attack the paint, drive the basketball. Well, interesting the way they break the press for the second consecutive time. Wells, they cut off the baseline, his favorite spot. Great matchup with Wells and Parton. Martin sticking right to him. 
Freeze looks for Holloway. Shot clock at 10. Lions drives, gives it off. Wells with five to shoot. Tough shot, doesn't get it. Great job, Black boxing out Freeze. Barton streaked down the court. Gee, they didn't see him. Yeah, he wanted it too. He was trying to hook up with Jackson to get eye contact. Less than three to play. Antonio Barton sees the lane and takes it. There's the drive that Deb was talking about, getting breaking them down off the dribble. Holloway. Freeze thought about it. I didn't want any part of that jump shot. No, he made two in the first half from about that distance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, two minutes to go yeah. in the game. The yeah. run gets a little bit smaller. <laughs> Holloway splits. Pulls up. What a shot by Holloway. Can't get it. Memphis with a chance to take the lead or tie, and we've got a foul. And it'll be on Holloway. That'll be his third. There's the play, and you look at a bar, and he's going to go right into the lane area. And things opened up for him. Chris Mack did not like that defense, and we mentioned how he was telling us last night how the offense has improved, but they've slipped in that category. Well, and I, you know, for the senior, Holloway makes a nice attempt, but then he compounds the miss with trying to get up and get get that play back too quickly, and an unnecessary foul on Jackson. Jackson, seven of seven from the free throw line tonight. And here's what we've got left. Well, and you know what? That timeout at the 17 minute mark may come back to hurt Memphis. I agree. Coming in, having to give his team a second wake up call, left with no full timeouts. Jackson doing a great job tonight. Eight of eight. He's got 10 points and eight assists. And we are tied at 63. Drag the foot, it'll go the other way. And that's Weatherspoon right there. What a step in that time. Wesley Weatherspoon on the weak side, cut off Wells. Watch it, he had a, he had a good step to his right hand, and that's the play right there, yeah. causes the travel. 150 to play in the ball game. Jackson doing a nice job running the show this afternoon. Double high screen. Shot clock at 10. Antonio Barton to the hole again with the layups. Well, just no interior help for Xavier off the drive. Free's got hung up on the weak side. Holloway going right again, working on Black. No spoon, the rebound. Let's see if they go back to that horns play. 60 seconds left in the ball game. Uh, Weatherspoon is over lobbying <laughs> for his own play for Pastor, but I think they're going back to that double high. Holloway now guarding Jackson. He crosses him over. Pulls up, 16 footer, no. Xavier with the ball trailing by two. 10 seconds between shot and game clock. Lions trying to go baseline, loses it. Still lost, we've got a whistle by Joe DeRosa and it'll go against Xavier. Not a good play by Lions that time, trying to do too much off the dribble. The Lions will foul out on this play. In the game for the Musketeers, number 12, Brad Brentford. 11 points in the first half, 8 in the second for Lions. He sits down with 19. Now the shot clock has been turned up. 31.6 to play. Do you just keep the ball in the hand of Jackson? I mean, because he's 8 of 8 from the line. Well, Witherspoon will go to the line. We got double bonus. Well, he has had a 69% shooter, so not great, but he has had a big impact. He and Antonio Barton in this uh, last five minutes have come up big. 
Witherspoon, one of one from the line this afternoon. He's got 11 points. What a comeback, though, by Memphis, and they've made the big plays down the stretch. Starting with Witherspoon. Yeah, coming in, gets three the old-fashioned way. Inside and Barton, and uh, Debbie talked about it, and uh, Josh Pastor said we got to do more off the drive, and they have been more aggressive. Okay, let's go into Josh Pastor's huddle. One of the key things he's telling his team, obviously score being number one, but what else? Score and, uh, and, and being aware of foul situations, and now with uh, Redford back in the game, you've got to identify him as a three-point shooter. Cover up, make sure you cover out on the perimeter. Josh Pastner's team trying to keep that at-large bid alive. They've won nine of their last 11. Xavier's won six of their last eight. Xavier has not scored since the 337 mark. They've gone almost three minutes now without a basket. And here is Witherspoon at the line. Now the other thing, you know, it's, it's different our coaching philosophies. I was always a guy that on the road, I like to go for the win. Yeah, you exactly. know, so it'd be interesting to see if Xavier goes for the three and tries to, to get up here rather than going for the tie. Now that's a moot point. Well, they're down by three. Holloway. Jackson stays with him. He goes for the two. No. Tipped around, and Antonio Barton comes down with it. That was a terrific defensive play by Joe Jackson. Xavier going to go for the two and try to extend the game, but he really kept Holloway in front of him and forced him into a tough shot. Jackson, nice job. Yeah, and also Black coming over, trying to cut off the lane as well. And Chris Mack already drawing up a play he hopes to get off. Disappointing for Xavier. They played so well in this ballgame. And Barton at the line. First trip to the line this afternoon. And he really, you know, we've been talking to Josh Pastor before the game. I asked him if any kind of hangover from that tough loss right. down at Southern Miss. And he said, no, this is the group. They, they, they played a really good game, had right. their opportunities to win, so there was, there was no residuals from that. Now, practice was very spirited yesterday. The five-point lead now by Memphis. Final 18 seconds. Timeout. Chris Mack's going to call the timeout and show him the play he drew up during the free throws. Busy day today. Don't forget, stay with us because it's the men. Arizona Wildcats square off with Stanford. That'll be coming up. And the women take the court. UCF battles it out with the Tigers right here on this court in Memphis. And we'll wind up today out in the Pac-12 with the showdown between USC and the Huskies with C.J. Wilcox. Full day of college Youth continues today. 3 o'clock Eastern, 12 Pacific. All right now for Memphis, uh, guard the perimeter. Limit the looks from three, no fouls in this situation. Let's see if uh, Xavier tries to design something where you get a drive and pitch or a throw into the post to drive people into the lane and kick out. Now Memphis has been on a 12-0 scoring run. That's why they've made up the deficit and have gone up by five. That's been over the last four minutes and 12 seconds, and you can even extend that scoring run as we take a look at the timeouts remaining because Memphis has done what they needed to do. And I think it also started, Mike, you know, we were talking about that pressure. Now, a little bit of pressure seemed to throw everything off kilter for Xavier. Well, and it was, uh, we talked about it, it was token at first for about you know, right. two or three minutes, and then they started to be aggressive with the run and jump. Breeze, Walker, Redford, Holloway, and Wells out on the court for Xavier. Jackson, Barton, Barton, Weatherspoon, and Black for Memphis. Holloway. And they foul him, and it'll be a two-shot foul. So this one is not over yet. Not what you wanted. And uh, we talked about it at the top that Chris Crawford was the guy who requested 
Holloway and did a decent job on him in the first half, but it's Jackson who's played him here down the stretch. And I like Chris Mack's philosophy on that. Just get a basket. You don't need a three at that point. And here comes Holloway at the line. Seven points, seven assists. Only two of 11 from the floor in this ball game as Jeff Robinson comes back in. Freeze will go out. Well, if you can funnel the ball somehow to Weatherspoon, he is the uh, weakest. You know, obviously they're not going to throw it to Black. Right. But uh, he is the weakest of the other four from the free throw line. Gets them both, and Davis will come in. And Redford will come out. Here comes the pressure by Xavier, trailing by three. They get it into Jackson, and he will go to the line. He's eight for eight from the stripe today. Yeah, third in uh, CUSA, 85%. So good job by Memphis getting the ball in the right guy's hands. And don't forget, he's the man that missed the second of two free throws at Southern Miss that could have tied it. Well, it's a different. I mean, it's a different vibe for this one. I mean, that's, oh, yeah. that's one that. But when you're up three, you know, to, to get it to two possessions, there's a lot less pressure. Freeze back in. Redford back in. And Davis and Robinson will go out. Two young coaches that are outstanding, and they've done battle today. What a day by Joe Jackson. 12 points and eight assists. Jackson trying to stay with Holloway. He'll launch the three and he parries it with 6.2 left. And it's a two point game. And Jackson, Holloway just finally has to foul him. He was chasing him, and Chris Mack wanted it a lot earlier. Now there's a little more pressure on this yeah. shot. We talked about it with it. Uh, but dude, and this, this three was from, this was deep. Got a little screen for Walker. It gave him just enough room. And he's floating to the left when he shoots this. He's able to pull up and kind of straighten up. And again, Coach Mack going to his bench and bringing in some substitutions. Redford is back in the ball game. Holloway. Just sitting in front of the bench. His tank is probably close to empty. What an effort today in so many other areas besides just scoring. Huh. 11 for 11 from the line for Jackson. Well, first of all, the inside guys and Walker Freeze have to block out in this situation to put loose sleep, but uh, Jackson has the game in his hands. And DJ Steffens will come in. Tarek Black, who played a nice game, missed a couple of easy shots, but he stayed in the game, which was important. Getty Freeze will let it fly. Doesn't get it, and that's going to do it. A big win for the Memphis Tigers. They defeat Xavier in the final, 72 to 68. For Mike Javinsky and Debbie Antonelli, I'm Ron Thulin reminding you, come back with us at 4 o'clock Central Time when the Memphis women will host Central Florida. 72-68, the final. So long from Memphis, Tennessee.